Good morning and welcome. There's a little buzz in the air. For those of you who are new here to church, we do, the, we do church like this every Sunday. <laughs> every Sunday. Just keep coming back and you'll find out. Because when you're here like this and this kind of energy, church is going to be like this every Sunday. Isn't that the way it works? Blessed and happy Easter to every one of you. What a great joy it is to be here. My name is Father Jonathan Wickham and it's a delight to welcome you to Easter services here. And I want to make sure just a few things. I'll say a few things. First of all, you might hear a commotion outside, and that's a good commotion. That's a flowering of the cross. If you brought any flowers and would like to help flower the cross, and this is for all ages, and even if you didn't bring flowers but like, would like to help to flower it, you're welcome to go back there and do that during the prelude, which we'll hear in just a moment. And uh, like I said, we have flowers back there, and then we'll bring it up together before the entrance hymn, and it will be our great big beautiful Easter cross that will welcome us into church today. As we continue in our worship today, you'll need a service bulletin. You might have one of these in your hands. If you don't, you probably have a QR code in front of you in the pews that you can utilize or maybe lean over to your neighbor's bulletin and use the QR code on the back of their bulletin, and that can give you to an online bulletin, and that can connect you with our liturgy as well. If you're home and watching Blessed Easter to you or wherever you are, and whenever you are, because today might actually be this coming Wednesday, which is always weird to me. It just feels... Today might be Wednesday where, I don't, welcome, happy Easter, however you are. All that you need at home on the screen will be in front of you. And to you that are here, if you'd like to see the service again and hear the music um, and hear the message again, also, that will all be saved on YouTube and on Facebook Live as well. There's a lot to say. There's a lot of love to share. Let's do all this holy and beautiful work together. We'll have a prelude, and again, you can help flower the cross and let us worship in great joy and in great love. Welcome.
Will the congregation please stand? Now is a good time to make sure you have your bells out. Because you can ring the bells when we make the Easter proclamation, particularly at the A-double-L-E-L-U-I-A word. Just saying. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Alleluia! Christ is risen! Alleluia! Christ is risen! Our entrance hymn is Jesus Christ is risen today. Let us sing together. Oh! 
celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the lesson. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people, people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord of whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be God. Please turn in your service bulletin to page 760 or in the prayer, prayer book and join me in reciting Psalm 118, verses 1, 2, 14 through 24 by responding in half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a song of exultation and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them, and I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. 
This is the Lord's doing. And it was marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad. Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They'd been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. After Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went out and told those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe him. Later he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table, and he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness, because they had not believed those who saw him after, they risen, after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <laughs> Do not be alarmed, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. 
But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. In the name of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Alleluia! In this church work, in a congregation such as this, and many of you maybe are here for the first time or for the second or third time, I don't know what church you might be familiar with, but sometimes in church we can get really formal and kind of stuffy, we can kind of get organized and orderly, and everything has to happen a certain way, and then Easter happens. And there's flowers out there, and there's flower debris on the floors, and there's kids outside hunting eggs, and there's people walking around, and I, and I, I kid you not, I kid you not, best laid plans, right before the service, I realized that I had sent down this sermon uh, in my tablet, my book, and my folder somewhere, and it was nowhere to be seen. And I ran, that's why we started a bit late after the prelude ended, there was that long gap, because I was running from somewhere to somewhere else. Bring it! Couldn't find it, but then... Blessing upon all blessings, a dear friend found it and brought it to me just literally, just as I'm walking into the church. It was like, oh. It's a miracle. As much as we want to try to organize everything and make sure it all happens right, well, that's, there's a human life in the midst of all this. And that's where we are gathered this morning. Some of us early gathered here early, or maybe uh, you might be aware of the tradition where some gather at night for what's called the Easter Vigil. And at that service, there's all of this wonderful, we hope, formality and look of it. But it's really a bit of a mess. We start outside at the Easter Vigil with lighting a new fire. And, and in Corpus Christi, it's hard to light a fire outside in the spring because there's wind. And then when it's lit, it goes out. And when there's candles, they go out. And then there's walking. And people really aren't used to going to church and carrying a lit candle and a bulletin and flowing Easter clothes in wind, into church. So there's all of this mess that happens. And then when it gets calmed down inside the church, we think it's all going to go right. But then there's a wonderful, long, sung prayer, and there's all these readings. And when do we stand? And when do we sit? And when do we blow out the candle? It's a reminder that what we are celebrating today is, in all of its glory, a beautiful holiday, a beautiful festival, a beautiful great feast of the church that requires all the best that we can give and all of the order and planning that we can put into it. And trust me, a ton of order and planning has gone into it. But what it is most of all is it's a human story. That's why we're here, for a story that is, that is deep within us. And it's not just a human story, it's an earth story. This story is deep in the dirt. It comes up through the roots, it spreads through the branches and the trunks of the trees. This, this story flies on the air and the birds. This story is the story of all creation. And the story is this. Life persists. Life. Somehow, life persists. And as, as one of my favorite theologians says, life does not only persist, life insists. Life will. Period. Life will. That's the story we're celebrating today. And, and as much as I love a good play, and as much as I love good liturgy, and I kind of dig the robes, and I love all that stuff, as much as I love to put on all of this wonderful, wonderful thing that we do, which really is a play, it's a kind of a theater that we do here. If it stays here, if it stays in this place, if it stays connected to these vestments, or the Sunday best clothes that you have on, or all the actions we do today, if it stays right here, we've missed it. Because this story is not here. It's not. It's not. This is the practice that helps us remember that the story is everywhere. The story is everywhere. And if you want a little, just a little nugget about this not being just me that is saying this, that this being known and intuitive throughout all of history and the earliest of the church, just listen to the, to the wonderful little detail that is in this Gospel of Mark. And Mark, we've said this so many times, Mark does not include things by accident, but Mark also is the earliest account of the early disciples as they were reckoning and wrestling with what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. 
going from the birth of Christ all the way through the baptismal waters to the foot of the cross and to an empty hole in the ground. Those early disciples are trying to figure out what it means. So this is kind of biographical in a sense. And listen, that Mark included this detail that the angel of God said to those very first apostles, those very first disciples, those three women who came to do honor by Christ by laying him to rest according to their tradition. This is what he said. You've heard it a couple of times. I'm going to say it again. First, he says, do not be alarmed. By the way, that's code in the Bible for this is an angel speaking. (laughs) Trust me, you're going to have to look that up. Because anybody who says, do not be alarmed, is a messenger of God. Can I get an amen on that? I mean, if anybody's read the Bible, you know what we're talking about here. It's like the number one thing that God says and God appears to people who are terrified that God is appearing. God says, don't be alarmed. I think that's humorous. (laughs) I would be terrified. (laughs) Do not be alarmed. For you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who is crucified. He's been raised. That's alarming. He's been raised. He is not here. Look, there's the place they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter. I'm not sure why they include Peter as the extra, except that Peter denied Jesus a bunch of times. And I think Peter was kind of on the outs, or most likely had put himself on the outs. Right? Go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. If if it's all about the resurrection, I mean, if the point of the whole early church was all about resurrection, the cross and resurrection, and resurrection and cross all happened in one place in Jerusalem, why did Jesus tell them upon his resurrection to meet them back in Galilee, where it all began. Galilee's a three days, Jay, three days journey away, at least, maybe longer. <coughs> Galilee is where they're all from. Galilee is not Jerusalem. Galilee is north. It's a journey away. Why isn't Jesus anchoring all of the teaching and resurrection appearance that he wants to share with his disciples that we hear about in just a minute in Mark. Why isn't he anchoring it all right there in Jerusalem where all the magic happened? And my suspicion, not mine alone, many theologians suggest. But the reason is because the resurrection is not about the resurrection. The resurrection is not about the resurrection. Something like the resurrection happens in this world, what do we do? Instantly, it's on TikTok. (laughs) Instantly. Instantly, it's blasted across social media. And then there's a a place. You go to the place where that happens. And you maybe commoditize that. You maybe make an entry way for it. And it might be commodity for the right reasons. It might might be charity. It might be wonderful things that we do, but we build it. We're going to build a statue, an edifice, a building, a fun park, a something. We're going to put up hotels. We're going to make a whole thing out of all of that. It's, and by the way, it, it, there are things about that all right there. Why, why, why did Jesus not stick around there to make that point? Why in the Gospel of Mark, the earliest account of the apostles, is the first thing that the resurrected Christ does is leave town. But not just leave town, go back to the beginning where they began their ministry together where they're all from. I think the call to the disciples then and the call for us now is that resurrection is not an event to be celebrated. It's not, a, it's not a place to be anchored. It's not something to be set in one place and then to be remembered in history. It's not a, it's not a story to be written down in a book and then we tell it to our children late at night. Even though, yes, tell your children the story late at night, read it from the book, that's really important. But the most important thing to say to your kids when they're old enough to understand is that it's not about repeating the story all, over, all, all the time. That this miracle is a revelation, not just of an event. It's a revelation of the way it is. That resurrection is living and breathing through all of us. Even when we might not know it, believe in it, or maybe even want it. The people who connect to nature know this intuitively. And you and me, my friends, we all have... Maybe plants. I mean, it's hard to go tell a story about winter and springtime down here in South Texas. They all get matched together down here. So 
So if I was telling this story in northern New York or, or up in Canada, we might be able to say it's a long, cold winter. We never believe that anything's going to live. We only have winter for a week, maybe three days here. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. In that three days, actually there's two sections of days, one in December, one in January, I had some precious plants that I loved and cared for, that we held and tended, that we wrapped up carefully, that now are sticks in the ground. And yet, just when I, just when I think that one tree, the starfruit tree, just when I thought that one little tree in a pot isn't going to make it, I was ready, and Jennifer and I already, Jennifer had clipped off all the other branches that were dead, but the trunk was still kind of maybe, we, maybe, we don't know. The tiniest little two millimeter bump of green on the trunk of the tree at the junction of the branch. I'm not saying that that is resurrection, but I'm saying that that's a story of resurrection. And that story gets told over and over and over and over again in our life together. The birth of a child. At the same time that a child is born, the family is grieving for the loss of a loved one. That we grieve the disasters in the world that take so much life, and at the same time we celebrate in a world where so much new life seems to always happen. That's the abundance of God's grace, and it seems to be baked into the world. And I believe that Christ is calling us to live that way, to live the resurrection. And that when Jesus says to his friends, I'm going to Galilee, he's saying to his friends, and we are his friends. Go with me back to the place where it all began and repeat this journey over and over again. Because what did Jesus find in Galilee? Jesus found his friends, his community, which was pretty great. But he also, the very beginning of his ministry, remember the story, it wasn't told too long ago, the very beginning of his ministry in Galilee, it was Peter's mother-in-law who came when they had a little get-together at Peter's house. And she was very sick. In fact, she was dying. And what did Jesus do? His eyes open, his heart open, his hands stretched out, his, his love extended, and she's healed. Just like that. The very beginning of, of the ministry of Christ, we learn that this journey that the disciples are going to take, that the journey that you and I are going to take, is going to be a journey of, of, of seeing and understanding, of reaching out with our open heart. It's going to be extending our hands, it's going to be opening our minds, it's going to be listening and holding and tending and strengthening and growing and praying and getting quiet, it's going to be all of life and it's going to be a long walk from Galilee to Jerusalem from Galilee to Jerusalem and back and forth and back and forth, that's the journey that we're on and we're walking together not following Christ so that we can go to the resurrection the journey is that we are following Christ into resurrection. That's the journey we're on. And the invitation for us in the midst of life with its tremendous challenges, the deep grief, confusion, concerns, and discouragements that we face, the challenge for us is whether we, we will follow the way of the one who lives this life with us, who has shown us the path through this life. Will we follow this one who has lived a life so filled with grace, so abundant, overflowing with love and possibility, saturated with justice, this full, big, glorious life that Jesus lives and calls us to live with us, this life that he calls over and over again, the kingdom of God, the reign of love, this one. This God human one, this God with us one, this Jesus Christ who is the one, goes with us, within us, along the way, calling us to live every step of our lives. Not here only, not on Easter only, not on Christmas Day only, but to live our whole lives in the midst and majesty of resurrection life. And here we are. Just like those early disciples being told to go over there to find Jesus. Which is a code word for us maybe to say, go from this place. 
Go from this Easter celebration out there into your homes, into your prayers, into your quiet places, and into the market spaces. Go, go find Jesus. Go live the resurrection as you live with the resurrected one. Go, he says. Tell everybody. Even tell the one who denied me three times after I warned him that he would, but then he said he wouldn't. Go tell that one as well. Go tell him that Christ is alive. And that Christ is going ahead of you on the journey into all of your places. Go see him. Go see what it's like to follow Jesus into these spaces where he already is. There you will see him, just as he told you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Come on, folks. Alleluia. Christ is risen. There we go. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. And so we stand together. Gathering up all the faith we can muster, using words that have been given to us from generations past that can help us express this deepest mystery. As we say, the Nicene Creed, it's in your service bulletin, as we say it together. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Eternally God and the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate with the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we pray, let the Holy Church proclaim the resurrection saying, Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs> Created in the image and likeness of God, we pray to see God's image in one another. May our lives proclaim. Christ, Christ is risen. Tested in faith and strengthened by God's love, we pray for open hearts that our lives will proclaim Christ is risen. Liberated from death and despair by water and spirit, we pro pray for those who share our hope that all may proclaim Christ is risen. Joining with those who share in the passion of Christ through illness, famine, war, temptation, and trial, with special intention for those in our midst, especially Terry Foley, Gary Markham, Jean Chatham, Wayne Dunkel, George Finley, Jennifer Frizzell, Sally Daly, Jackie Lee Rock, Rochelle Payne, 
Emily Flores, Bishop Michael Curry, Lily Longoria, Sam Wolf, Trey Molina, Kathy Cole Perez, and Gracie Magallion. For those who are recovering and healing from injury and illness, including Deborah Haven, Rich Will, Jennifer Wickham, Diane Gottlich, George Hutchinson, and Carolyn and Skip Stout. We pray for those who are homebound or in long-term care, Ramiro Lopez and Sally Daly. We pray for those serving in the military, including Noah Hinojosa, Ethan Fish, Miles McDonald, Shane Weinstock, Derek and Julia Haven, Scott Rohde, Carlos Trevino, Tyrone Hubbard, Olivia Ramsey, and Nathaniel Hinojosa and their families who watch and wait and worry. And we pray for courage, strength, and relief that all who suffer may proclaim Christ, Christ is risen. <laughs> United in hope that your love is eternal and your embrace extends beyond the grave, we pray especially for Robert Ratliff, Doug Beecham, and Trudy Morris, and all family and friends who have died. We join with all the saints as we proclaim. And together, holy, holy and blessed God, God, who in the Easter mystery revealed anew the covenant of reconciliation and rebirth, will open our eyes and enliven our hearts that we may behold and receive your redeeming love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear ones, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Take some time to greet your neighbor with a, a blessing of peace. And the kids are going to come up and speak.
everybody. We have some wonderful kids here. We want to have just a moment for some announcements, and then we're going to do a quick children's sermon. So is Autumn, come on up for announcements. Autumn is one of our members of the Vesture, which is the leadership community, and she has a welcome for everybody. And then we're going to do a little children's sermon, which has surprises. And congregation members, you might have found some of those surprises, and they're not for you. <laughs> you might have found some of those, and they're not for you. So if you know what I'm saying, just nod. Nobody knows what I'm saying. Autumn, tell us about life at all things. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Autumn, and I am blessed to be your vestry of the day today. It's actually my first ever shift, and what a special day to have this first shift on. Uh, thank you. I promise to be short and sweet and to the point today. I know we have a long day ahead of us, um, but I did want to make sure that for all of our new shining faces, we make sure that we get the chance to stay in touch with you. Um, within your pews, we do have a QR code as well as a newcomer uh, pledge card. You know, if you wouldn't mind filling that out, dropping it in the offering plate, if you don't get a chance to fill out the paper card today, follow that QR code that's gonna take you right to our website. You'll have the chance to review our newsletter with all other important uh, updates and announcements. But um, in addition to just wanting to make sure that we greet our new faces, I also wanted to just take a couple of seconds to shout out the fact that we have four birthdays today. So in addition to Father Jonathan's birthday today, we also have a birthday, Miss Judy Haven, Miss Marcia Keener, and Miss Junie Tomlinson. Give her a big round of applause for our birthday fellas today. And again, um, just a reminder, if you're able to fill out that newcomer card, we'd love to get back in contact with you. Uh, we hope you all enjoy your time here at All Saints, and I hope you all have a blessed Easter. Thank you so much. Okay. So, normally we have a children's sermon on Sunday, and a, and, and a part of me said, it's Easter Day, there's no way we're going to have a children's sermon, because the whole day of Easter is a children's sermon. <laughs> But then I thought, huh? let's maybe see if we can do something cool with the kids for children's service. So, here's the thing. You know that some magical force made Easter eggs happen outside. Did anybody go to the Easter egg hunt outside? Yes. Amazing. Did anybody miss the Easter egg hunt and get here too late for it? If you did miss it, here's the thing. I was around in church earlier, and I saw some eggs sprinkled around the church. And here's what I'd like us to do. I'd like us to go on an Easter egg hunt and see if God and God's people have made some surprises happen to show you how much they love you and how much life is possible in love. Can we do that? So that means we're going to go on an Easter egg hunt. Here's the, con here's the responsibility of the congregation. You need to help. There are EGGSs all over the place. <laughs> Some of them are stuck in the little book holding places in front of you, okay? So in order for this not to take an hour, we're going to need your help. Because while I had this idea, I didn't really plan it very well. Which anybody knows is kind of normal. So, here we go. I, I don't know, is there Easter egg looking music that you could make, make up Arlene? I want There we go. Let's go find. Let's go find. No, you don't have to stay in here. Let's just walk around. Let's just go walk around. Are there Easter eggs? Hold up an Easter egg. Anybody got an Easter egg? Oh, here's one. There's one right here. Okay, there's some Easter eggs over here. Everybody gets an Easter egg. Everybody gets an Easter egg. Is there an Easter egg? Did you look at it? Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, it's really important that you find the Easter eggs because if they stay there, it's going to get kind of weird when they kind of go sideways after time. So we need to find all the Easter eggs. I don't know how many there were. I'm sorry. That was that would involve planning, and that's not, that's not going to happen. Did everybody get an egg? Everybody got an egg? We have them all? Need an egg? Does anybody have an egg? And every kid gets up here and here an Easter bag as well. Which has some So happy Easter, everybody. And the only way I know how to wrap this up is by saying what we've been saying all morning. Alleluia. Right? The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. As we come to this communion table, I want everybody to know that you're welcome. Our custom in receiving communion is to receive in bread and then hold on to the bread to in pink afterwards. You'll be guided to the communion rail and you will make sure that everybody who would like to receive communion or blessing receives us. Let us walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. And somebody is already eating their candy. Because they're That's it.
gifts of love for the care of your church and the ministry of your people. Amen. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you when we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet as mothers and fathers care for their children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. <clears throat> and so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings throughout all eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver you from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You look with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners. He healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it, and he gave it to them, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And as supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you. And he gave it to them and he said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Now gather at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor and glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Congregational response for the breaking of the bread is in your service bulletin. Alleluia! We share this bread to share in the body of Christ. We are many of one body, for we all share in one bread. Alleluia! There you go, Alleluia! <laughs> Dear friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God, God's holy food for God's holy people. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
post-communion prayer is in your service bulletin. Let's stand together as we pray together. And we pray, loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth people forgiven, healed, renewed that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us, redeemed us and made us children through the resurrection of Christ our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage and sin into true and everlasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, rest upon you this day, remain with you always, give you great joy, peace, and hope forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King, Get Out Your Bells. There's a few times that you'll need them. We'll sing verse 1, 2, and 3, and then skip in to verse 7. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.